jako fa, úplně v amatérských podmínkách na celou, celý pokoušení pro jako na, na video. Temptation was uh, filmed by him uh, in really amateurish conditions. Temptation was done in the United States. Pokoušení bylo na to, že nebo přes Gordon Davidson's theater, I believe you, you've met Gordon Davidson. Gordon Davidson v tom hrál. Pokoušení Temptation. Mm -hmm. Jako film. Was it a film or a play? No. Jako hru. Yes. Aha. Yes. Havel had some help from several quarters. Thanks to the remarkable diplomacy of William Lures, who had been the American ambassador to Prague from 1983 till 1986, his wife Wendy, and a few of his fellow diplomats. Charter 77 and the whole Czechoslovak intellectual opposition had never been entirely cut off from the world of ideas and politics across the ocean. One of the things that made life in normalized Czechoslovakia more bearable, if not more trouble-free, was going to the ambassador's grand residence in Prague and meeting there with Kurt Vonnegut, Bill and Rose Styron, Edward Albee, John Updike, Philip Roth, and many others. This called for an elaborate choreography, since the government bureaucrats that the ambassador also had to entertain would not be caught in the same room with the washouts and self-appointees. They would not even be caught with them in the same garden. On his arrival at the 1985 US Independence Day celebration in Prague, a brilliant summer day, the deputy Czechoslovak foreign minister Jaromir Johannes, representing the communist government, took about a minute before he identified Havel among the guests milling about the lawn, said, he is here, spun around and walked out with all the other officials from the foreign ministry. Nostravi. Nostravi. Cheers. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my great pleasure to welcome you to the online gala night of the Václav Havel Library Foundation and Bohemian Benevolent and Literary Association. Together we will celebrate cultural diplomacy, honor ambassadors William and Wendy Lures, present the fifth annual Disturbing the Peace Award to a Courageous Writer at Risk, and tell you about other programs of the foundation that extend Václav Havel's humanist ideas and literary work. On behalf of the Bohemian Benevolent and Literary Association, I'm very excited and thrilled to welcome you in our beautiful Bohemian National Hall, and I expect to see you very, very soon. Václav Havel admired America. He was friends with US presidents from both sides of the aisle, as well as with the finest artists who care about human rights who in turn supported him when he was in prison and were among his first visitors when he became president. Our program will be about cultural diplomacy and artists, writers, students, dissidents, diplomats and politicians who share Havel's view of global responsibility and citizenship. We would like to thank to all of you who have supported us even in these difficult times. Our special thanks go to Ambassador Craig Stapleton and Mrs. Dorothy Stapleton, Count Riprand Arco Zinneberg and his wife Maria Beatrice, Priscilla and Ward Woods, William and Catherine Cabanis, Gustavo and Patricia Cisneros, Kevin and Karen Kennedy, Rosemary Ripley and Peter Grubstein, Ben Heinemann and Christine Russell, 
Andrew Shapiro and Tamar Neuberger, Jack and Patricia Steck, Jan and Maritza Vilcek, and Kenneth and Susan Wallach. And you can see that the list of all of you who have contributed to keep Václav Havel's legacy alive is even longer. We can't thank you enough. Before we proceed to our program, we would like to encourage you to check out our exciting online auction. The most prominent Czech artists, recipients of the prestigious Jindřich Chalupacký Award, which was co-founded by Juan Delors, kindly donated their pieces to us. You can take this unique opportunity to acquire a contemporary Czech work of art. And for those who are not avid art collectors, we offer two unique photographs of Václav Havel by his personal photographer Andrzej Nemec. And we also offer t-shirts with Václav Havel's famous signature. Bill and Wendy, we are so sorry that we can't throw a big party for you as we are planning to do. From my heart, I would like to thank you for being our honorees but mainly for being such wonderful friends of Václav Havel, the Czech and Slovak community, and our foundation. Good evening. I'm Council Member Ben Kalos. That's at Ben Kalos on social media. Thank you to the Bohemian Benevolent and Literary Association and the Václav Havel Library Foundation for all the great work you do, including your quick adaptation to bring your valuable cultural programs online, including tonight's benefit auction. I, in particular, I'd like to thank Joseph Balavs and Pavla Niklova for their leadership. You may have read a number of attention-grabbing headlines offering obituaries for New York City. To borrow from Mark Twain, the reports of my death are greatly exaggerated. New York City is very much alive, very much in part because of our immigrant communities. 40% of New York City residents were not born in the United States, and that is what made our city strong. The Bohemian National Hall was built in 1896. After more than a century surviving the Spanish flu and now coronavirus, I, I know that the Czech community is here to stay. In my role as a local council member whose grandparents and relatives immigrated from Hungary, Romania, and Czechoslovakia, I have the honor of providing modest funding to support the annual rehearsal for truth and other programs as we explore our city's rich cultural diversity to build bridges, share knowledge, and spread tolerance. I hope you will join me in supporting them with your own modest, even generous financial support. Tonight we honor former United States Ambassador to Czechoslovakia, William Lors, and the Honorable Wendy Lors. Uh, from their close relationship with Václav Havel and Charter 77 and their work together on behalf of Czechoslovakia. Each year this gala gets more impressive and this year is no different with celebrity appearances from none other than Joan Baez, Jane Fonda, uh, Olga Havlova, and yes, it still counts for me even if they're archival because I haven't seen them yet. There's so much more, and I hope we can count on you for your support. Welcome to this year's presentation of the Václav Havel Library Foundation Disturbing the Peace Award to a Courageous Writer at Risk. The great Black American writer James Baldwin once said that Plato didn't want any poets in his Republic because the writer is, by definition, a disturber of the peace. Writers disturb the peace, said Baldwin, by simply telling the truth, no matter how uncomfortable, unwelcome, or unbelievable that truth may be. The Disturbing the Peace Award recognizes the contribution of outstanding writers around the world who, like Havel and like Baldwin, refuse to be dissuaded from simply telling the truth. Our awardees are international writers of distinguished works of fiction, literary nonfiction, biography, memoir, drama, or poetry, 
who are courageous in dissent and have suffered unjust persecution because of their beliefs. The Disturbing the Peace Award helps to protect these and other writers with the shield of international attention. And it also enriches public understanding of the power of good writing to promote and preserve humanity's highest ideals. The award comes with a $5,000 cash prize and this year for the first time, the possibility of a two week residency at the Václav Havel Library in Prague. We'd like to thank the institutions and individuals that have nominated candidates for this year's and past year's awards. They include Penn International, Amnesty International, Words Without Borders, Freedom House, the Václav Havel Library, Ideas for Cuba, and individual supporters of the foundation. We also express deep appreciation to the members of this year's jury. Philanthropist and newspaper man James Ottaway, who has long standing ties to Czechoslovakia and the Czech Republic and still takes groups of students from Bard College back to Prague every year. Journalist Jolian Nagela, an expert on Czech and Slovak affairs, who served many years in Central and Eastern Europe working for Radio Free Europe, Voice of America, and other institutions, and literary scholar and translator Sevinc Turkan representing last year's awardee, Turkish writer Asli Erdogan, who was unable to take part in this year's jury. We'd also extend warmest thanks to members of the committee that prepared this year's shortlist, Tamar Neuberger, Pavla Niklova, Martin Palos, Lisa Stone, and Salil Tripathi. And now here to present this year's awardee, Cuban writer Angel Santi Esteban Prats, is Martin Palos, former ambassador from the Czech Republic to the United States and the United Nations, and president of the Václav Havel Library Foundation. This prize is an uh, articulation expression of solidarity with uh, uh, these type of writers. Uh, Václav Havel, when he was in this situation, he himself uh, um, experienced what this solidarity means. It means that it gives you a hope at least or maybe certainty that there are some people listening uh, to your messages that there are some people who want uh, to participate in your search for identity uh, in formulating uh, your disturbing questions and eventually turn these questions to uh, some uh, i would say practical reality in the world and uh, also participate in anti-totalitarian struggle. Writers are not politicians. Writers are not necessarily activists. Writers can be different type of persons. Some of them uh, loving uh, uh, the quiet study in which they write. Some others are more uh, apt to communicate with other people, different uh, authors, different writers, different style of thinking and writing. Uh, I'm very happy that uh, uh, Václav Havel Library Foundation already has started this project a couple of years ago and that now we have already four uh, uh, laureates, recipients of uh, this prize. Uh, we had uh, two persons from Asia Chinese and Burmese, or from Myanmar, to writers from Turkey. And now, just to also respect, uh, I would say, uh, equitable uh, geographical distribution, I'm very happy that it is a Cuban uh, author uh, that is uh, now being awarded, uh, being made a uh, disturber of peace and uh, a writer at risk. Uh, I think that this year's uh, laureate doesn't need uh, to be introduced because he knows what totalitarian regime is in its uh, daily activities. He is a very accomplished Cuban writer, uh, writer of short uh, stories, uh, someone who is known enough uh, by Cubans, but maybe not known enough by all others. So this prize is also a kind of step forward. Uh, for uh, uh, Mr. Prats. And uh, I think that we need to listen uh, to authors like that to express our solidarity with them. And frankly speaking, if I'm looking around the world, Cuba is certainly one of these places where uh, this action, Václavá legacy, Václavá message is very needed. Uh, so congratulations uh, to uh, the winner. 
and let's uh, uh, commit ourselves to international solidarity with Cuban freedom fighters, free-minded writers, and all other people of good will. Dear friends, uh, I'm delighted to be with you this year again, even at a distance. Uh, I have come to see those assembled around this award as a family of its kind. Family bound together not only by checklings of various types, but above all by a deep belief in a key democratic values, freedoms and rights. And in the need to defend them, I want to express my continued appreciation to Václav Havel Library Foundation for doing so much work in this respect. Thank you. Promoting democracy, the rule of law and human rights has been a constant priority for the Czech foreign policy. I myself have emphasized this since my first day in office. We know that human rights are essential to all open, inclusive and free societies worldwide. Therefore, we see it as uh, our obligation to draw international attention to human rights violations wherever they occur. But we also provide direct support. This year, the Czech MFA will spend over $4 million for activities of our transition support program around the world. One of the priority countries is Cuba. Mr. Angel Sandy Esteban Praca, the Abadi this year, is an outstanding short story writer and blogger from Cuba. He was sentenced uh, to years in prison for his criticism of the Cuban regime. He has been subject to continuous harassment and intimidation. But his only crime was to write what he really thought. He deserves our admiration for his courage, and we hope that international interest, as expressed by his prize, can help protect his life and health. The Cuban regime, as we hear, used the current pandemic as an opportunity to strengthen political repression persecution of civil society and the denial of right of expression have worsened. Emergency measures are used to target independent journalists. Thus, in the disguise of protecting public health, the virus functions as a cover for repressive action to silence human rights defenders. At the same time, the economic situation in Cuba is worsening. Those very poor whom you see if uh, you travel across Cuba are getting even poorer. That must make the regime very nervous and uh, fingers crossed uh, that their fallacy is called out in the end. Indeed, this applies as much to Venezuela as it does to Cuba. For the close, I want to reassert uh, the long-standing bond between Czechia and America. Uh, Ambassador William Muir and uh, Ms. Wendy Lurs, uh, honored this year, played an important role in that. Our bonds have been shaped by our deep felt affection for freedoms and human rights. We endeavor to join the support of those who experience the hardship we will new deliver and who aspire for the same freedoms and rights that we Czechs had been denied for so long. Friends, let us continue this work together. Accepting this award fills me with gratitude, precisely due to Václav Havel's personality and his legacy as an artist and politician. It's an honor for me that his name will be in my company from this moment forward. Through this recognition, I would like to bring global attention to the 61 years of Cuban dictatorship, where we, the artists, are censored and we don't have spaces to show our work because those of us that dare to cross the limits imposed by the repressors are later facing persecution, threats, the worst blackmails, torture for us and our families, and later unjust prosecution and prison. Those of us who dare to challenge these limits, like the San Isidro groups, the Mongeles, and the plastic artist Tania Brugueras, to name three of the most renowned movements in Cuba, are then put under the worst repression. All the strength of the powerful regime is put against artists that only want to reveal the truth as citizens, but the truth revealed by us has a greater importance in the eyes of the executioners. We ask all the nations of the civilized world to increase their repeal of this totalitarian regime 
that threatens to stay in power indefinitely. I want to dedicate this award to the independent journalists who do an amazing job in Cuba, providing people with the truth that they try to hide and receive the aggression of the political police. I also dedicate it to the scientist and writer Ariel Ruiz Urquiola, who received an unfair prison sentence so that the dictatorship could follow a horrifying plan to inoculate him with the HIV virus and is currently fighting for his life and is trying to be heard by human rights advocates around the world. I also dedicate it to the Cuban political prisoners, in particular Ernesto Borges, who is serving more than half of a 30-year sentence, and Aymara Perez Nieto, who has been four months in punishment cells, unable to see her young children. In a special way, we bring attention to the Belarusian artist Maria Kolesnikova, whose life is in danger because of opposition to the Lukashenko dictatorship in Minsk. My special thanks to the jury for choosing me among so many candidates and to let them know that this award comes with the spirit of Václav Havel and gives us a shield against the aggression of the dictatorship in my country for the only crime of writing the script for the film Plantados, which will be shown in movie theaters around the world and show the horrors committed by Fidel Castro against those that think differently. More than being offended, the regime should feel shame, but we know that this is impossible. I ask all of you to pray for freedom in my country and for world peace, to live in a world where artists don't fall into the crime of revealing the truth we see around us. I would like to congratulate the other five nominees who are with me with pride and happiness in receiving this award. I send you a warm virtual embrace in any corner of the world, planet where we may be, and long live freedom. Thank you very much. is his main legacy and has it changed since 2011? Well I think his main legacy is the importance of moral leadership, of people taking responsibility for themselves, of um, understanding uh, people's humanity and respect um, and he really was kind of a philosopher president uh, but his main legacy, as far as I'm concerned, is the dignity of leadership uh, and not um, and what a leader, uh, what is expected instead of self-promotion, um, but kind of the sense that um, you're an accidental leader, uh, but that it's the moral responsibility, I think. And I think that those of us that knew him and also could see the change from what happened, uh, before 1989 and then um, now uh, have a responsibility ourselves to talk about what it is to have an enlightened leader who understands that we have a responsibility towards each other, uh, the importance of the individual, uh, and that um, the governments are actually the servants of the people and not the other way around.
great thing about Václav Havel uh, that you can easily invite him into general communication, uh, general conversation, if you want to say, with uh, big uh, uh, thinkers, philosophers, poets of the past, and still uh, uh, led him to demonstrate very concrete and particular situation in which he, he himself uh, was, uh, in which he was finding himself. I want from my students uh, to focus on themselves, uh, to start uh, with their own situation. But obviously, if you want to articulate your own situation, you need some instruments how to transcend your, uh, I would say, uh, idiosyncratic uh, perspectives, your uh, too much of concreteness uh, in your situation. And Havel is a good uh, instrument, good uh, way how to do it. I can tell you right away that uh, you can believe or not believe me uh, that uh, this communication makes sense, but I have very good uh, collection of essays now written by my students this year, last year, even I'm thinking to uh, put them together and uh, publish a small edited volume uh, in which the answer, what does democracy mean for me today, uh, is articulated by people I'm fascinated always with those who come from Latin American background. It's not only Cubans, uh, Venezuelans, but many others. They all are coming from, everybody's coming from somewhere. And uh, obviously the question is what you are able to do uh, with your experience and with your point of departure. Well, Václav Havel Library is the principal depository of uh, Václav Havel legacy. Uh, his uh, literary legacy, his spiritual legacy, and uh, his uh, political legacy. And uh, it is involved in a large number of uh, activities and programs that are all in one way or another connected to uh, Václav Havel, his life and work, and uh, his thought. Uh, Havel never thought of the library as a museum that would uh, hold his uh, uh, diplomas uh, from honorary degrees and his gowns and uh, this kind of stuff that you often see in the museum. He always thought of the library as a space, as a space for people to meet, interact, communicate and have dialogue. Dialogue, he was a dramatist, was a central uh, concept for him and that's what we are trying to do in in uh, in in many ways we mm, hold about more than 160 events in the library every year uh, debates discussions uh, small performances uh, uh, small musical performances and so on we go around the country and around Europe and the world with uh, uh, debates and lectures and talks about uh, Václav Havel. Increasingly, we are involved in educational programs because a generation of people has grown up who had never met Havel or experienced what the communist period was, uh, was like and we feel uh, that we need to help them understand why the concept of human rights, the concept of the power of the powerless and other central Havel concepts were so essential for overthrowing communism and for establishing freedom and democracy in the Czech Republic. And because our audiences are constantly growing, our uh, our uh, digital footprint uh, is uh, beginning to resemble that of the abominable snowman. We need to find uh, new ways to uh, approach our ever increasing audiences. So we are just at this time launching uh, uh, an online audiovisual program and internet television. If you well called Havel Channel that uh, will be officially launched at the beginning of September 
and that will concentrate all our programming, all our debates, all our products, all our educational e-learning programs uh, and so on. And we hope that in this way we will be able to um, uh, approach uh, hundreds times more uh, people than we've uh, done so far. I think the prize disturbing the peace is uh, something, something very important, important till today. We have many new topics and issues, but I think this prize, which is very, very, uh, it's like Václav Havel. I think it was very important for for Václav Havel and for us. Uh, to take care about the, about the countries where the where such an important thing like the freedom of speech is not a everyday topic, and this is why we have many many people from countries like Vietnam or Belarus, writers and journalists and activists who are working together. Well, the, the award is a a worthy cause, which spotlights writers who are in a difficult situation in their in their home countries some are in jail on trumped up charges others are have faced have been in jail and have chosen to emigrate i did not have any preconceived notion of who was going to get it. Uh, I read what I could. I reread some things. I gave it a lot of thought. Um, in the end, the the points system added up, and uh, the uh, the winner is a uh, Cuban descent writer who has had a lot of problems with the state system and as my understanding has been in and out of in and out of jail and uh, he is uh, a worthy um, winner of of this award and hopefully he will be able to come and collect it though dear friends ladies and gentlemen the theater faculty of Janáček academy of performing arts in brno czech republic would like to present itself in the future as a healthy and dynamic environment that encourages young people to create and be creative, that searches for talented individuals in the coming generation and gives them free space to frame and formulate their views. That is why we are very pleased to begin cooperation with the Václav Havel Library Foundation in New York, which guarantees us a respected and inspiring partner the project of the short plays inspired by the work of one of the most important figures in Czech history, Václav Havel, is another fundamental creative opportunity for our students and our faculty. We really appreciate this cooperation and we look forward to its development and continuation. Our sincere thanks go out to the Václav Havel Library Foundation, its director Pavla Niklova, and all those working together on this great project. We look forward to our shared future. Warm regards from Brno. The legacy of Václav Havel for me in these days, it's a three ideas I love. That the world has a power that uh, uh, human rights are much more important than economics and uh, that politics should serve the true. And uh, the second thing uh, for me was very important and for my theatre to be part of a, a rehearsal for Truth Festival. It has very big impact on us. Uh, we had a possibility to speak with people and we uh, could play our plays uh, in front of American uh, audience and it was very interesting for us also the question and answers after the show was very uh, interesting for both sides I think and uh, uh, one of the most important thing uh, 
was that we met the people from uh, a new school university in New York and now uh, it's the second year we work on uh, international project uh, uh, which uh, I hope will have uh, uh, some presentation on the next uh, rehearsal for true festival uh, it's about uh, we called it American dream and Czech nightmare and it's about uh, feelings in this society in these days from the both sides of the ocean so from Europe and from USA but also from other part of the of the countries we are still in touch during this crisis during during the coronavirus crisis so we share also experience from isolation from another part of the world and all this experience will have uh, some impact on our show so this is one thing what which what was initiated by rehearsal for true festival Havel's work is a gift to all of us, but especially as a young writer, it has been such a launch pad of inspiration. Studying the memorandum and the Vonick plays showed me how to theatrically portray dilemmas caused less by bad guys than by malfunctioning, nonsensical systems. This theme became the basis for my plays Personal Speaker and Ice, both of which look at individuals who are pressured to conform with self-serving systems that have forgotten empathy. Part of the fun and challenge of writing these plays was figuring out how to give them a Havel-esque feel while updating them to be authentic to my experiences as an American growing up in the 2010s. In Personal Speaker, this meant adapting the mechanical language tie deep into an AI voice box that literally speaks for the characters. I also wanted to figure out how I could steal some of Havel's stylistic choices. For example, Havel uses repetition as a tool to show the persistence of these systems. I explored how I could do the same. For personal speaker, another theme that I started from was alienation brought on by communication technology. Of course, technology depends entirely on how we use it. I do think that technology can help us connect, whether that's chatting with a friend in Colombia on Facebook or taking a class on Zoom. But it can only facilitate these connections if we first work to destroy the walls that we have built between nation, race, and gender. One of the reasons Tie Deep fails is because its incorporation creates additional layers of hierarchy. In Personal Speaker, my characters reject their voice boxes because the technology starts to rule their lives and keeps them within restrictive identities and relationships. Technology can exacerbate our tendency to divide ourselves, and Havel was wise to warn us. At a time when it feels like truth has become weaponized, when fake news is both a slogan and a reality, I find myself increasingly impressed and inspired by how Havel calls out the absurdities of the governing forces and reminds us that we have the power to stand up to them. I hope that my plays can be a testament to this legacy. I am so excited to travel to the Academy of Performing Arts in Prague and meet teachers who can further enrich my work in theater. I hope that the residency will offer me some new perspectives and approaches to theater making. And I hope that my teachers will push me a little bit out of my comfort zone in order to deepen my work. I can't wait to meet my Czech peers and learn what kinds of ideas we can exchange. I've never been to Prague, and I am so thrilled by the opportunity to explore this historic and beautiful city. I'm excited to see the Old Town Square, Latina Park, and of course the theater. This is such an extraordinary opportunity, and I'm so immensely grateful. It was important for me to... Uh write on Havel's topics or uh, to be inspired by his plays because I think that even in his, let's say, politics and values there is still something deep and meaningful today and I think it is also because he had as a politician and as a playwright too some moral values and I'm afraid that today the politics became more like a retail or just a PR campaign uh, and the politicians they don't have any solid values they just want to get uh, power and uh, the support of people but they don't fight for any cause and Havel fought for a certain cause and I think that that's something that is important today and in today's world and politics uh, and politics, uh, 
it's really dangerous uh, that values are missing. So that's why I think that Havel is still uh, important today. And why was the New York experience important for me? Uh, it surely was and it was great because uh, it gave me let's say a new perspective on how we teach theatre in Europe. Uh, I could compare it and uh, this was a great experience and of course the best was uh, the opportunity to see New York, to visit New York, uh, to experience it on my own because I have never been there before. So that, that was overwhelming and amazing. So, yeah. So. <laughs> Good evening and welcome to our 2020 gala. I'm sorry that we can't all be together in person in these strange and challenging times, but I'm so glad that we are able to gather virtually to honor the legacy of Václav Havel, to support the work of the Havel Library Foundation, and to pay tribute to tonight's honorees, Ambassador Bill and Wendy Lures. Václav Havel once famously said that truth and love must prevail over lies and hatred. And although I have invoked that phrase on a number of occasions over the years, it's never felt as apt as it does today, at a time when truth and facts are under attack, and at a time when love is seemingly in short supply at a time when we need it most. Times like these call for individuals who are willing to speak out and speak the truth. Individuals not just including Václav Havel, but also like so many of the individuals and organizations that the Havel Library has supported over the years. Times like these also call for innovative and devoted diplomats and public servants, such as Ambassador Bill and Wendy Lures. When Ambassador Lors was posted in Czechoslovakia, he and Wendy quickly became trailblazers. They hosted dissidents. They had events at the residence that raised the eyebrows of communist authorities on more than one occasion. They reached out to all sectors of society and they left a legacy that remains to this day, a legacy of cultural engagement and philanthropy. Speaking of philanthropy, while you are here at this event tonight, I hope you will click through to learn more about what the Havel Library Foundation does and how you might be able to help us. We depend on your support. And in particular this evening, we're having an online auction. So I would encourage you to take a look at some of the many items you can bid on there and if you find something that you like, you can take satisfaction in knowing that you're not only bidding on and buying something that might be of use and interest to you, but also you're supporting the important work that the foundation does. I said that it's fortunate that we can all be here virtually together, but I look forward to being together again under more normal circumstances next year with all of you in New York to honor and support the work of the Havel Library Foundation. Tonight, I want to thank you for being with us, and I hope you have a wonderful evening. Hello, Bill. Hello, Wendy. Hello, anybody else who's watching. I'm recording this in our wooden house up here in the Sudetenland, halfway between Prague and Dresden. And Bill and Wendy, you were here with us clambering over the construction a little over eight years ago. I was so looking forward to coming and being with you on this amazing occasion. But I'm stuck here in this lovely green bubble, uh, actually doing really beautifully, especially in comparison to the rest of the world and to the United States, which is undergoing so much trauma in these days of September 2020. Helena and I remember you and Wendy. 
in so many ways and have so many connections that I couldn't even begin to count them. You were our role models of how to do good in the world. Bill, you are the embodiment of the skillful, compassionate diplomat from those old days which seem so long ago where we Americans were the good guys, where the Czechs looked out from the castle walls to see the American flag fluttering over the Glorietta in the embassy and had hope. We were in Prague for all your years here when your residence was a center of artistic and cultural and social encounters that actually played a big role in planting the seeds of the Velvet Revolution. Dearest to my heart and to Helena's was how you understood the role of culture, of art, of music, of dance, of literature, to change the world. So in a moment, I'm going to play for you a piece that I first put together back in 2008 to celebrate the inauguration of Barack Obama. It's a collection of American songs that you'll recognize, each evoking a different place in the heart of our country. But for your special version, I have inserted the Czech national anthem. See if you recognize it.
offered me the job of ambassador. Uh, as I say, I, I'd been ambassador to Venezuela, which was a very senior post. It was one of the most senior posts in Latin America. And they were sending me this little country in, in Central Europe, which was the country we had the worst relationships with in, in the region. Um, so I wasn't sure uh, whether it would be much other than a lovely city um, for me to um, to wait to get, uh, to get to Moscow, where, where I really knew what was going on, and, and it was an important place to be. And um, as I say, um, this visit, that, that arrival in, the, in December of, of 1983, turned out not to be just uh, going into some hole where I was not going to have much access or much understanding of this country that was so hostile to the United States. But it turned out to be a, last, a life forming, uh, changing uh, moment in my life and in Wendy's life. I remember 80s where uh, Bill was the ambassador in Prague and we were many times invited to the embassy and they prepare a lot of cultural events. It's uh, very uh, pleasant for me that I am able to give you to pass to you my congratulations to the prize and I, what I think is that uh, nobody deserves it more than you, you both, Wendy and Bill. Uh, I remember uh, our meetings in the embassy before the Velvet Revolution when we uh, periodically met with not only with them but also with our friends from the cultural and even dissident circles uh, which were made possible to get together in a, a place when we felt very free. Of course probably it was eavesdropped but uh, we felt very free with them and I think that from the uh, cultural viewpoint 
it was uh, extremely important for our survival. Well, I remember Wendy and Bill in Czechoslovakia. It's a long time ago, and at this time I was, I was, I think I was very young, uh, sort of activist. And my friend, uh, my friend Martin Palouš, introduced me to Wendy. And Wendy at this time helped me a lot because she smuggled my interview with Czech, a uh, few interviews with Czech writers, and she smuggled these interviews to United States. And for me, as a very young journalist uh, and underground activist, it was something. And I remember Bill, like very long, long man. And at this time, I was thinking all Americans are 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 long, long people. When the lures uh, came, you know, and uh, it was uh, something, another new experience, quite uh, pleasant and surprising, because it was just like if not just one ambassador came, but two ambassadors. Uh, Wendy was so, you know, so active and so inspirative. Uh, she uh, created her role uh, as, a, as, as a complement, you know. Uh, she uh, was the, the gentle, inspirative, smiling and friendly part, you know. And uh, she made a friendship uh, very, very easily. Uh, for example, when our son uh, Michal had his wedding, you see, uh, the lures and, uh, and their friends came to the wedding and, uh, and uh, joined us just as a family, you know. It was, so this was such, such a sort of example and uh, I think it was uh, uh, Wendy's inspiration that uh, all, all this happened. And uh, so it means that the I would say the cultural uh, side of the of the pro, of the professional diplomacy uh, somehow changed into friendship, you know, into rather close friendship. During 1983 and 1986, that I and a couple of my colleagues had a chance to meet some of the most prominent American writers. They all came to Prague, uh, uh, at, uh, they were all invited to Prague by American ambassador to Czechoslovakia, Bill Lewis and his wife, Wendy. I still vividly remember 
meeting uh, uh, playwright Edward Albee, writers Kurt Vonnegut, William Styron, Robert Stone, E.L. Doctorow, or poet Galway Kinnell. Of course, we were not the only ones who had had the pleasure to meet these people. Uh, but Bill Lewis also courageously invited dissidents and signatories of Charter 77. So we had a unique opportunity also to meet some people like uh, Václav Havel, Zdeněk Urbánek, uh, Ludvík Vaculík and others. So the ambassador's residence was a place to meet not only the leading American writers but also leading Czech dissidents. <laughs> this uh, I th connecting people and giving cultural diplomacy a very special meaning uh, was a very important and commendable part of Bill's and Wendy's mission. And we were lucky because they fell in love with our country, I believe. They became friends with Charter 77 signatories and supported them in their fight for freedom. And after the revolution, they were among the first to uh, offer help to the new democratic regime, especially to their friend and our first president, Václav Havel. Uh, Wendy, with her um, exceptional organizational skills and inexhaustible energy, uh, founded the, uh, the, the Foundation for a Civil Society in January 1990 and later in 2012 co-founded the Václav Havel Library Foundation. So the Lurises deserve a gr great thanks and gratitude uh, for everything they have been doing over such a long time for our country and especially for, ha for keeping Havel's legacy alive. I consider the biggest role of uh, Bill Lewis and Wendy Lewis in Czech Republic as being the uh, guardians of Czech dissidents. Uh, the, the fact that uh, actually the role was based on the fact that they protected those dissidents from being ostracized by the regime, by being so heavily prosecuted. It is New Year's Day 1990 in Prague. We are sitting in the kitchen of Olga Havel three days after her husband was elected the president of Czechoslovakia. With her is her old friend Wendy Lurs, the wife of William Lurs, who was the US ambassador to Czechoslovakia from 1983 to 1986. Wendy came to ask Olga about her role in the video journal. Olga, what is Video Journal? 
Videožurnál je založená samizdatová společnost, která vznikla z potřeby, byly časopisy, se vydávaly samizdatově, noviny, všecko možné, ale televize, která u nás byla velice špatná a vůbec neinformovala o některých věcech pochopitelně třeba o nás nebo tak, tak vznikla potřeba dělat si to sami. Takže jsme si opatřili stroje a začali jsme to dělat amatéři nebo poloprofesionálové jako z potřeby určité informace sdělit. Michael, you're going to have to translate for me. Sure. <laughs> oh, video journal is a Samizdat TV group that came into being uh, as one of the Samizdat groups. We always had problems with the Czech television, which was very bad. So next to all other Samizdat magazines and papers, we uh, decided to get some equipment and start doing TV work. Well, I was very lucky because I think it was in 1996 uh, when, when I came back from my studies in the United States and I was looking for some, something interesting to do in the Czech Republic. And I, I realized that there was a foundation, American foundation working uh, back then in the Czech Republic called Foundation for Civil Society. So I became really interested in what kind of foundation it is and, and what they do. So I met with the people who worked in the foundation and, and uh, it wouldn't take long and I would meet with Wendy who actually was the founder of the Foundation for Civil Society. And then a year later, when and then I became member of, it's like I was cooperating with the foundation. And then a year later, in 1997, uh, basically the decision had to be uh, taken whether to continue as a Czech indigenous organization foundation or whether to close the shop in 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 the Czech Republic. And I was part of that group of people who were dreaming about some potential uh, potential future potential continuation of the wonderful work Wendy and her team did in the Czech Republic and Slovakia then. And we decided that there was still a need to continue with the mission of building civil society and democracy. And this is how VIA Foundation in the Czech Republic and Pontis Foundation in Slovakia came to existence. So basically Wendy is responsible for really making sure that for 23 years I had the best job I wouldn't even dream about, but I had it. By his uh, cultural diplomacy, William Luers with Wendy gave the Czech cultural opposition the strength to fight non-violently against totalitarianism. They help it to create the social atmosphere that led us to the Velvet Revolution. The Velvet Revolution that was started by students along with the theater artists made the writer and playwright Václav Havel the head of state. In the 1990s, Havel, as a president of Czechoslovakia and later of Czech Republic, played the role of the philosopher of the global politics and global defender of human rights. Mr. and Mrs. Luers helped him to fulfill his remarkable cultural diplomacy. In the domestic Czech politics, one of the main programs of Havel's policy was the, the renewal of civil society. Even in this uh, difficult work, he found great help from Wendy and the Foundation for a Civil Society created by her for this purpose. Wendy and Bill, thank you for everything. Thank you for the great work you did for Václav Havel, for all of us, for free Czech 
cultural life. Congratulation. My heart is with you in New York in this very moment. No tak pro mě znamenala mnoho, protože za prvé to byla první příležitost se vůbec dostat nějakým způsobem do světa. A potom pro mě osobně znamenala úplně nejvíc, protože jsem se dostal vlastně do místa, které teda se stalo takovým mým srdečním místem, kam jsem se od té doby několikrát vracel do Headland Center for the Arts u San Francisca. A jinak jako celkově vlastně ta cena měla v té době veliký, velikou váhu, protože ty osobnosti, které ji založili, těch si všichni vážili. A e, například já si pamatuju, že vlastně, když jsem tu cenu dostal, tak jsem se automaticky stal čestným členem Rady Hradu, což bych asi teď nechtěl se stát. A Vlastně i to, že jsme se mohli setkat s Václavem Havlem, že tu cenu předával osobně, tak to bylo skvělé. A pro nás to byl naprostý zázrak, že se někdo takový stal prezidentem, protože to se stal, to se prostě, jako kdyby se nám zhmotnil nějaký sen. A ta doba byla tak jako úžasná, že na to budeme velice vzpomínat a jeho odkaz je především morální, to znamená, že jako celá jeho osobnost, která ne, není pouze, že to nebyl pouze politik, ale prostě ještě tím, že to vlastně byl umělec, že to byl literát, že to byl dramatik, tak to taky nikde na světě neexistuje. A e, jako ten jeho humanismus a všechno tohle, co v něm bylo, tak to mám pocit, že nemělo teda ve světě obdoby. To znamená, že jeho odkaz je pro nás velice živý, i když e, v současné době je tady úplně jiná situace, ale já každopádně vždycky budu patřit k jeho velkým teda ctitelům. Howell's belief in the individual human responsibility has set the stage for this new and more challenging era in the, in the history of humanity. Listen to the words of Havel. The salvation of this human world lies nowhere else than in the human heart, in the human power to reflect, in human meekness, and in human responsibility. At the end of his signature work, Power to the Powerless, Havel imagines a new era, a new experience of being, a new rootedness in the universe, a newly grasped sense of higher responsibility, and a newfound inner relationship to other people and to the human community. Havel's words then sounded utopian. Today, they sound pressured. He calls us to look forward rather than backward. Never in history of humanity has there been such a need for a global civic forum. For billions of Earth citizens to exert their higher human responsibility to assure that our Earth will remain habitable for the next century. And each individual, if each individual chooses only self-survival, human civilization will be in peril. Even though Havel never addressed directly climate change, if we choose Havel's summons to individual responsibility to our vast human community, we will overcome and endure. Tonight on this glorious anniversary, 
to which Wendy and I are so proud to have been invited to speak. Let us pledge ourselves to follow Václav Havel's charge. We must build a civic forum of global citizens who will dedicate themselves to a single goal, to preserve an earth in which our children and future generations will prosper and long endure. I thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Work for something because it's good, not just because it has a chance to succeed. These words from Václav Havel capture not only his life purpose, but the life purpose of the two people we honor tonight, Bill and Wendy Lures. Bill and Wendy are the recipients of the Bohemian Benevolent and Literary Association's 2020 Award for unparalleled service to Czech and Slovak communities. There could be no one more deserving than Bill and Wendy. My name is Stephen Heinz, and my wife, Lisa Stone, and I are honored to say a few words about this extraordinary couple whom we have known for more than 30 years. As often happens with Bill and Wendy, our relationship began with networking when I was looking for a way to go to Eastern Europe and help in the process of building democracy, or in the case of Czechoslovakia, rebuilding democracy after the fall of the Berlin Wall. Bill and Wendy helped me land a job with the East-West Institute in Prague, where Bill had served as U.S. ambassador a few years earlier. I moved to Prague in the summer of 1990, and a few years later, Wendy's Foundation for a Civil Society supported Lisa's position working at Prague Castle for President Havel. Arriving in Prague, I quickly learned that an American in that seductive golden city could barely turn around without meeting people whose lives Bill and Wendy had touched and changed including, most importantly, Havel himself. During Bill's tenure as ambassador, he and Wendy turned their official residence into an oasis for dissidents, who never expected to wind up on the guest list of the U.S. ambassador while they were being followed, imprisoned, and silenced for their thoughts by their own government. Wendy defied diplomatic norms by visiting their imprisoned friends, and Bill championed their cause in Washington. Back then, it bears a mention, the U.S. represented the best of democracy, and at least to many Czechs and Slovaks, it also represented a tantalizing, forbidden culture of experimentation in the arts, in music, in literature, film, and politics. Could the American cultural, intellectual, and political figures that Bill and Wendy brought to their embassy have planted ideas in the dissidents' heads or nurtured their hopes for political and cultural freedom? You bet. That's what cultural diplomacy is about. And in pursuit of democracy, it is truly profound good work. When Wendy and Bill finished their tour, they returned to the U.S., but they left their hearts behind in Central Europe. The political and moral plate tectonics that led to Czechoslovakia's freedom in 1989 had grown with Wendy and Bill's encouragement, and they did not forget what they'd learned while practicing diplomacy immersed in culture. So when our Congress invited the newly elected Czechoslovak president to address a joint meeting in Washington, Wendy and Bill shaped Václav Havel's visit as only experienced hands could. When Western expertise was needed to shore up institutions across the Czech and Slovak republics, Wendy created her foundation for a civil society and in turn two vibrant NGOs, VIA and Pontus, that have been lifting lives and supporting civil society in the Czech and Slovak republics to this day. 
When I worked as an advisor with Havel's foreign policy team, Bill and Wendy each supported me with their wisdom and contacts. And in recognition of Havel's ties to North America, Wendy founded the Václav Havel Library Foundation here in New York as a partner to the Havel Library in Prague. Our foundation's oral histories, Disturbing the Peace Literary Award, Rehearsal for Truth, Theater Festival, and International Student Playwriting Awards all uphold the ideals of the foundation's namesake. I like to picture the backyard at the Pechek Palace with a bunch of long-haired dissidents nibbling the hors d'oeuvres while Bill holds forth on American values. One smallish guest, a dissident playwright with an awkward speaking style, was turning out writings that ultimately helped to tumble the walls of communism as the Cold War came to an end. Havel wrote, none of us know all the potentialities that slumber in the spirit of the population or all the ways in which that population can surprise us when there is the right interplay of events. On that note, thank you, Wendy and Bill, for your long and strong service to the Czech and Slovak republics, and congratulations on this award. Here's Wendy and Bill. It is my absolute privilege to present to you this award on behalf of the Bohemian Benevolent and Literary Association for the unparalleled service to the Czech and Slovak communities for 2020. Diki, translated uh, roughly from the Czech, Diki means thank you, Lisa and Stephen, Greg and Debbie. Joseph, Andy, and the amazing and creative Pavla Mikola. The Velvet Revolution welded an unbreakable bond among those who watched Howell as his band of revolutionaries uh, thought and laughed their way peacefully to power. That miraculous year after 1989 buoyed thousands of us who shared and delighted in being part of it. We are a club of people who remain hopeful that humans have a capacity to overcome desperate days. Stephen, Lisa, Wendy, and I passed many of those glorious days together, as did many others at tonight's event. None of us was more energized by the explosion of hope than Wendy Lewis. In January 1990, Days after the inauguration of the first president of free Czechoslovakia, several American foundation leaders gathered in the Ford Foundation building uh, to learn about this unexpected new phenomenon in Prague. They pledged on the spot to provide Wendy funding for a new organization that she would lead. It came to be known as the Foundation for a Civil Society. They had heard, I don't know from where, uh, of those three years when we were in Prague and we brought writers and artists from around the United States and we wedded our, this relationship with Havel and his group. The Velvet Revolution was in real terms a cultural revolution. After that meeting at the Ford Foundation, Wendy in a whirlwind few months assembled a gaggle of young smart dreamers who over the next decade established dozens of new programs to support Havel's task of building a new democratic society, some of which still prospered under Czech, Czechs and Slovaks. 
when he deserves the honor you give us tonight. For Václav Havel, the building of human responsibility and power took precedence over building governments and political parties. That belief was the source of his wisdom and of his disappointments. At the end of his signature work, Power is the Powerless, Howell imagines a new era, a new experience of being, a new rootedness in the universe, a newly grasped sense of higher responsibility, and a newfound inner relationship to other people and to the human community. Until recently, those words sounded utopian. Today, in times of pandemics and climate change, they are farsighted. Never in human history has there been such a need for a global civic forum, for seven billion citizens to exert their higher responsibility and power to assure that our Earth will remain habitable for our fellow humans in the next century. In each, if each individual chooses only self-survival, human civilization is in peril. If we accept Havel's summons to individual responsibility and a greater community, we will flourish. Okay, off you go. Where's the, where's the applause? No. <laughs> Thank you, Bill, my love and inspiration for the past 40 plus years. What is patently obvious is that I never could have dreamt of being in Prague as the wife of the American ambassador in the mid 80s. Bill has led in the area of cultural and public diplomacy from Moscow to Caracas and then to Prague, bringing the most talented and prominent artists, writers, poets, painters, and playwrights to each country to celebrate their culture and meet their counterparts, especially impactful in closed communist Czechoslovakia in the mid 80s. As you may have come to understand, I love to start things. From the Chilean prisoner parole program for Amnesty International in 1977-78, to Pacific Primary in San Francisco, where my children were, to the Foundation for, for Art and Preservation and Embassies, inspired by the ambassador's residence, the Petchek Palace in Prague in 1986, the Foundation for a Civil Society in 1990, and the Václav Havel Library Foundation in 2012. Frankly, I'm really proud of our legacy. FCS's former offices in Prague and Bratislava are now the leading NGOs in each country. The Young Visual Artists Award program is now in 12 countries. 500 American Masaryk Fellows, all young, taught English in the early 90s, many of whom remain loyal to the Czech Republic and Slovakia. And of course, the Václav Havel Library Foundation, which ensures the legacy of Václav Havel in the English-speaking world. It is important to recognize that Václav Havel Library Foundation would never have thrived without the inspired and talented leadership of Pavla Niklova. Congratulations, Pavla. When Havel produced Disturbing the Peace in 1985-86 in interviews with a Czech journalist in Germany, he said, hope is not the conviction that something will turn out well, but the certainty that something makes sense, regardless of how it turns out, even when conditions seem hopeless as ours do here and now. We were there then, and were given the opportunity to come back in 1989 and host Havel's inaugural dinner on December 28th, the night before his inauguration, with all of the dissident pals, now the new Czechoslovak, free Czechoslovakia government. And then organizing with Madeleine Albright the, the unforgettable trip to Washington and New York in February of 1990. His legacy must be preserved. We try very hard to do that, and as a result, Bill Lures was asked as the only foreigner to speak last November uh, 19th um, on the anniversary of the 30th anniversary of the, uh, of the 
Velvet Revolution, to 130,000 cheering people in Wenceslas Square. Um, and it, so it is, and Havel was cited very often throughout that. I close with my favorite quote of his. When a truth is not given complete freedom, freedom is not complete. Thank you, Diki, Yakuyo, and Dobronots. <laughs>